Yes, the pharyngeal pouch is what we call, uh, what is called also a diverticulum, and essentially just a little hernia uh, that appears at the back of the throat. Um, uh, normally what actually happens is that when we swallow, uh, the muscle that uh, relaxes uh, when you, uh, you, when you um, uh, swallow, uh, what we call the cricopharyngeus, uh, that is actually quite tense and very tight. And then the, the lining just above the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, this cricopharyngeus muscle start herniating. Uh, in a way, the kind of the foot will, will goes to the side or to the back. Uh, and then this kind of little hernia, uh, this little pouch, uh, gets gets forming. Uh, sometimes these pouches are very small and they don't cause any significant problems. But if they do get bigger, then it's where the problem uh, arises because the the patient developed a lot of a lot of problems uh, with with swallowing. So the the pharyngeal pouch is diagnosed um, primarily clinically. Um, so obviously the patients will come to to an ENT specialist primarily because they will have problems swallowing. Uh, they one of the main thing that they will happen is that uh, especially if the pouches are big is that they will regurgitate food. So the food goes into the uh, into the pouch uh, and then it just comes back into into the mouth and that's a little bit like a. Uh, like cows, like rumians do, uh, when they regurgitate, um, you know, the, uh, the the actual food, and and so uh, that is, you know, one of one of the main problems. Uh, they they may lose weight. Uh, they may choke when they do um, uh, eat, especially if they they do have uh, you know big pieces of, uh, for instance, meat or food, uh, and then also can aspirate. So basically, by because the um, the, the the residue of, of, of food gets into the, the pouch, then that can get coughed and potentially get coughed into the airway. And then they could potentially then get, become very ill because they can get uh, aspirate, what we call aspiration pneumonia. So basically the, uh, the, the, the food context of the pouch goes into the, uh, onto the airway and that causes an pneumonia. So it can be quite, really quite problematic. Once we do have the clinical suspicion of that, then we normally do a fiber optic uh, laryngoscopy. Uh, so we put a telescope in, into the nose and into the throat. And then by asking the patient to blow the nose, sometimes we can actually even see the pouch or, or at least indirectly see uh, what the pouch causes, which is basically a pulling of saliva. So that clinical suspicion uh, will be there for you to then uh, um, ask the patient to have what we call a barium swallow, which is basically an X-ray of the swallow that uh, allows uh, to see the... Uh, uh, the actual pouch. So, as I said in the uh, in the original description, uh, so uh, depending a little bit on the pouch. Obviously, the pouch is not something that uh, it happens straight away. It's something that happens over years. Um, and then the patients, they they may have a uh, a number of kind of potential predisposing factors. There may be a, 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 a sometimes a very kind of high uh, uh, tone of the cricopharyngeus muscle. They may also have reflux. Um, and so these, these things would contribute to the formation of the pouch. So as I said, normally the, uh, the, 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 the first thing that the patients will notice is a uh, sensation of a lump in, in the throat. Um, and then sometimes we will find kind of uh, problems. They need to do a kind of like a double swallow um, or they need to kind of ask, uh, uh, get a little bit of kind of water to be able to get the food down. So that will be the first thing that they will probably notice. And then as the as the pouch gets bigger, um, then uh, it will be uh, the regurgitation. So because the foot, uh, the, 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 the foot goes into the pouch rather than going into the esophagus. So there'll be a residue of foot and then this, this will be coughed up. Uh, coughing, um, choking, uh, that can be a real problematic thing. Uh, and then also uh, uh, it can, they can have aspiration pneumonias. So in very extreme cases, you'll be able to feel the pouch in the neck. Although uh, in 22 years of experience of doing these pouches, I, I only seen one patient in which the pouch could kind of be felt from the outside. And this, this was somebody who actually lost a lot of weight and then you could actually feel the pouch uh, on the outside, but it would be very unusual to have that uh, sign.
Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, because um, one of the problems is that patients uh, will um, they were not able to eat uh, properly, and then they will lose weight. Uh, they'll become emaciated, um, and they they will become weak. Uh, and also, as I said, the, the one of the potential kind of uh, end uh, potential complications of having pharyngeal pouch is that you will potentially kind of end up having recurrent aspiration pneumonias. And that can be very dangerous and that could potentially kill the patient. And these patients are normally, they're not kind of often very young patients. Normally the pharyngeal pouches uh, um, uh, start sort of kind of uh, uh, appearing um, after the age of 50. And then sometimes even um, uh, elderly patients can be uh, really at risk of, 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 of dying from, from, from this condition. Yes, so, so one for early pharyngeal pouches, you may not uh, need to do anything. Uh, it, it, it would be uh, sometimes uh, uh, good to monitor, uh, do some diet modification uh, on these patients, uh, address some of the problems that these patients may have, i.e. the, the gastroesophageal reflux, for instance, uh, and that will be quite, quite useful in, as the first measures. Um, then, if the if the if the if the pouch is uh, is not very big, sometimes uh, dilatation um, either on the general anaesthetic or by interventional radiologist can be um, uh, very helpful. Uh, but if the pharyngeal pouch is established, uh, then the only kind of solution would be to to recur to surgery. The great majority of surgeries now are done endoscopically, so that patient means that they're all they're done through the mouth. Um, and the main two techniques that we have are, are endoscopic stapling uh, and then also laser uh, surgery. Um, I personally prefer the laser surgery because it gives you perhaps better control. In uh, the uh, the problem with the uh, uh, the 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 uh, uh, the stapling is that is very binary. So once the stapling is done, that's it. Uh, with the uh, the laser, you are allowed to 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 in a way to 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 clear the edges, to 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 do as much as or as little as you want, uh, and so therefore it gives you much more flexibility. Having failed that, uh, then you've got a number of kind of uh, external approaches, which sometimes can be necessary. Uh, partly because sometimes it's not we're not able to pass the endoscopes through the mouth because patients may have either they're not being able to extend the neck or may they have prominent teeth or may they have very narrow jaws uh, and then you may not be able to then put the uh, telescope down the throat in order to be able to apply either the uh, stapling gun or the laser. Uh, and then in those patients, uh, then it's, it's required to do it from the outside. Uh, and there's a number of techniques depending again of the of the size of the pouch, um, uh, and then but the most common uh, technique is the excision of the pouch. Uh, it is also very important that we, when we do um, address the pouch, we do address the cricopharyngeus, which is the muscle that is very very tight and doesn't allow to relax the upper part of the esophagus and allow the foot down. So it is important that we do, at the time of any operation, we do what we call a cricopharyngeal myotomy, which is basically cutting the muscle and releasing the tension of that muscle so the foot can go down without any problems. 